on this video here, we're going to be talking about the reflex arc and what exactly the neurons are doing. So if you think about a reflex arc, let's say you go into the doctor's office and he takes that little hammer and hits your knee. What he's really testing to see is whether or not your reflex arc is in check for your quadricep and your hamstring. So if your leg kicks up, we know that your quadricep is in effect and that it's contracting and that means that your reflex arc is working. One of the main things to know about the reflex arc is that it's always going to be involuntary. So let's kind of draw out what's occurring. One of the main things to know is that the reflex arc occurs in the peripheral nervous system and the spinal cord. So everywhere outside of this is going to be our peripheral nervous system and this here is going to be our spinal cord. So with the spinal cord we always have a dorsal side and a ventral side. And let's draw our typical leg. I'll draw it here in red. And so if we think about our leg, got our little toes there, on the top side, or here, we're going to have our quadricep. And I'll just write quad. And on this side here, our back side, we're going to have our hamstring. And so when we take that hammer, say we take this little mallet here, and we hit our knee here, what's going to occur is if it works, this quadriceps is going to contract and our leg is going to swing up. And so if our quadriceps is contracting, that means that our hamstring has to be relaxed. So let's start with our primary sensory afferent neuron. It's going to attach here in our peripheral nervous system and attach to our quadriceps. And so what's happening is that when we hit this mallet, it's going to tell our quadricep that we need to activate our stretch activated receptors. So once our stretch activated receptors respond to the stimulus from the environment, which is this mallet hitting our quadricep, that's going to stimulate a generating potential. And a generating potential is going to turn into an action potential. And this action potential is going to follow this neuron. Let's not forget to draw our little cell body here, the dorsal root ganglia. And it's going to enter in to our spinal cord. And so the main thing to remember is that we hit our mallet. It activates the stretch activated receptors in our input region here. It generates a generating potential which turns into an action potential and that action potential runs all along our sensory neuron and I'll write sensory primary sensory neuron and into the spinal cord and so this sensory neuron is going to synapse off onto two parts one part is going to synapse off onto a lower motor neuron and this lower motor neuron is going to come right back to our quadricep. And then we're going to have this other synapse region here, which is going to attach to an interneuron. And I'll draw that in green. And this interneuron is going to be inhibitory. Now, that interneuron is going to attach onto a lower motor neuron here, which is going to come to our hamstring. So let's take a step back and think about that. If this inhibitory interneuron is attached to this lower motor neuron, then do we think that this hamstring is going to contract? No, it won't. So let's look at this one now. If we look at this lower motor neuron, and it does not have this inhibitory interneuron connected between it, this lower motor neuron is going to generate an action potential and that's going to cause this quadricep to contract. So 
Let's kind of talk about what's occurring here at these synapse regions. One of the main thing to note is that if we want this action potential to occur or any action potential to occur, we need to generate something known as an EPSP or an excitatory postsynaptic potential. And what that means is that we're bringing in positive charge into this input region here, which is allowing for us to generate an action potential down this lower motor neuron into our quadricep. So at each synapse region, we're gonna have to release a certain neurotransmitter. And so for these regions here, we're gonna be releasing a neurotransmitter, NT, I'll abbreviate, and that neurotransmitter is going to be glutamate. Glutamate is going to allow for the influx of sodium or positive charge into this input region and in doing so it's going to generate an EPSP. When we generate that EPSP that's going to turn into an action potential and that's going to stimulate this neuron to be activated. Now, you might be wondering, why are we releasing glutamate here at this synapse region if we want to inhibit our hamstring? Well, in order for our inhibitory interneuron to release its neurotransmitters, it has to be activated as well. So that's why we release glutamate here into the synapse region so that we can have an influx of sodium here. And by doing so, we activate this little gen, this little action potential in the interneuron, which will then release its neurotransmitters to this synapse region here. So what are the neurotransmitters that are released here? Well, in order for us to inhibit this lower motor neuron, we need to generate something known as an IPSP, an inhibitory postsynaptic potential. And in order to to create this IPSP, we have to bring in negative charge versus this EPSP, which we want to bring in positive charge. So in order to bring in negative charge here, we're going to have to release the neurotransmitter glycine. And sometimes we use GABA as well. So by releasing GABA or glycine into this region here, it will allow for the influx of chlorine. And by bringing chlorine, which is negatively charged, we will never allow for this lower motor neuron to generate an action potential. So that is how our reflex arc works. Let's talk a little bit about what's occurring here. Well, the last step of our reflex arc is to contract our quadricep. In order to do so, we have to release neurotransmitters here into our muscles. So what neurotransmitters will we be releasing here? Well, in this region, we're going to be releasing a neurotransmitter known as acetylcholine, and I'll abbreviate it as ACH. So by releasing acetylcholine here, it's going to generate an action potential in our quadricep muscle, which will eventually tell it to contract, and that's how we will kick up our leg. So the reflex arc is extremely important because it's an involuntary motion, which means we don't have to think about what we're doing. And it enters into the spinal cord, not into the brainstem, and comes right back out into our peripheral nervous system.